come back. The historical development of the library can be divided into three phases. The first phase is the what? The ancient phase, or what we call the ancient period. The second phase is what? The medieval period. And the third phase is what? What they call the modern, sorry, the modern periods. And let's look at the ancient period. It is pertinent for us to know that what? The origin of library is as old as what? The origin of writing itself. The, then, in the, in the ancient period, we have what? Um, the Egyptian system of writing, we have the Sumerian system of writing, we have the Babylonians, the Mesopotamians today known as what the Iraq, and then we have the Greek system. We know in Africa that what the, the system of writing as recognized first is the system called hieroglyphic, hieroglyphics practiced by the Egyptians. Why in Europe and other parts of the world it is being attributed to Greece, which gives us what the Greek writing system. So we said that what library is as old as writing itself. So the ancient period of um, the library, by the ancient period, scribes, scribes were known as what intelligent men. Scribes were people that who knew the law. They were in charge of the libraries, libraries. Then what you will find, you will find private libraries, people having library for themselves. We have the religious libraries, keeping what the books of the law, depending on the religion. Then we have the what, royal library, telling you about what history of kings, the great grandfathers, the forefathers, the ancestral, and then the, how the lineage is to flow. So this period, the ancient period, was dominated by what the Egyptians, the Sumerians. Um, the Babylonians, and then the what? The Greeks. This covered what? The ancient period. Coming down to the medieval, the medieval means what? Middle, middle period. The medieval period, the most interesting thing, or the most interesting factor of the medieval, medieval period and the influence on the library is John Gutenberg. John Gutenberg's introduction of the word printing press. Gutenberg, the German, the introduction of the word printing press. With the introduction of the printing press, writing was no longer done manually. By this time around, machines were beginning to surface, and this period, this period covers what John Gutenberg was, was the highest influence on what the medieval period. Now, with all the renaissance, with all the revolutions, when economies began to began to grow progress, with all the industrial revolutions, everything that surrounded writing and everything. Everything that surrounded writing, writing gave birth to what? The modern period. We talk of the, the, the Renaissance of the mid century, about the 10th century thereabouts. We talk about the printing press of 14, uh, 1600. We talk about uh, the Industrial Revolution when the US be began to gain and progress over the world. All these things contributed and formed what? The modern period of, of the library. Now, this are what the library outside. How can we trace the history of library in Nigeria? In the year 1920, in the year 1920, the Lagos Readers Club was formed. Now, this Lagos Readers Club was formed by what group of what expatriates and few Nigerians. These expatriates are what men that are who are either in the form of the missionary or the colonial government who have lived in Nigeria over time, they came into the nation and now formed a readers club in Lagos. So 1920, the club was formed. Then about 1932, the Carnegie's um, Corporation of the United Kingdom 
funded that particular library with about six thousand four hundred pounds. Funded that library with six thousand four hundred pounds, the library had what enough money to work purchase more books and added to that library. Along the line, in nineteen forty eight. The, um, the University College of Ibadan was formed to presently known as uh, University of Ibadan, UI. It was formed. Now, when the University College of Ibadan was formed, some of those books from Lagos um, Readers Club were now transferred to University College of Ibadan. And now, University College of Ibadan truly marked what? The first academic library we have in Nigeria. The first academic library in Nigeria. Apart from that, we have some Nigerians then who were well to do that own library for themselves. We have the likes of Henry who had an estate then. We have the, the likes of John Carr. John Carr was a business merchant. He said that a library should be found what in his estate. We have people like Herbert Macaulay. Herbert Macaulay, Macaulay is what a renowned nationalist a renowned politician, a renowned activist. He formed what? His own library due to his influence abroad. Now, all these factors contributed to what? The development and the influence of the library in Nigeria. Now, having known a bit about the history, we now come down to look at what? The rules of the library. The rules are just what? The do's and don'ts. What are we to do in the library and what not to do? Now, one major thing the library detests is called the mutilation of books. Mutilation is synonymous to the word destruction, destroying books. The library does not um, tolerate its users to destroy the books. It doesn't, toler it doesn't tolerate the users to destroy books. Any books that are being mutilated should be, will be paid by the, it will be paid thereof. Another rule of the library after mutilation. Mutilation. Another thing the library detests is what? Theft or stealing. We notice that in the library, in the library, some users go there after reading, after their consultation, after the study, the literature, the books they have consulted might, it might interest them. And they thereby take the books from the library and take it as if it's their own. So another rule of the library is what that users are not meant to what, engage in any act of what theft. Then another crime against the library is what when they say over overdue overdue borrow, borrowing. The library borrows its books, its resources out, but there is a stipulated time for its users to return such books. Now, when the, the time has elapsed, it is a crime because the library, when you say you are returning it on a particular day, that day should not elapse. Such a book should be returned. Now, another rule is that you must not go into the library without what your library ID card. Without library ID it is a crime. Without an identity form of identification, no user is permitted to go into the library. Another thing is eating and drinking in the library where others are busy are busy studying. It is what it is prohibited. Then another great factor which is not even supposed to be conducted is what noise is not tolerated in the library. Noise is seen as what the greatest distractor of people's harmony, reading harmony. These and many others are some of the rules of the library. So one must not destroy library books, which is called known as mutilation. The books in the library must not be stolen. One must not wait for the time to elapse, which is borrowed. And you must go to the library with your heart and ID. Eating and drinking is not tolerated, as well as noise in the library. To be able to what, go through the definition of a library as what an organized collection of what, printed or published books, and then 
we looked at the objective that the primary objective of the library is what towards its meant to serve what the interest of what its users. The functions were also touched. We said one of the major functions is what disseminate information. Then we touched about the historical development of the library, going through the periods which are the ancient, medieval, and the modern periods. 